for so long, uh, we've been doing urban projects, condominiums, uh, GFA efficiencies. And here, I find it so liberating to try to just design experiences uh, to, to take advantage of a very spiritual site and to evoke um, classical uh, vocabularies, which I don't hear much today, like proportion, mystique, enchantment, beauty. Uh, when you do a hotel, is a, uh, you take a very humanistic approach. And in this particular project, the, the search for beginning on how to, to plan the project uh, to a large extent was dictated by the complexity of the uh, social balance of the village. <clears throat> uh, the site sits amidst a uh, paddy field. So two big design generators, one is uh, the irrigation laws or the subat laws where we have to actually keep to this age old tradition of how people share water in order to, to farm rice paddies. And the other blue uh, actually lines are based on religious procession to various temples on the site. <clears throat> so these are the, the two generator of the project. Obviously there are certain things that are beyond the control of an architect, but what are some of the things that you try to do to make the places that you design more sustainable, more green? Well, it's easy to try to be sustainable, but to be really sustainable, you have to actually measure your success in terms of actual consumption. I think there's so many aspects of sustainability, but I think really super high uh, density housing like uh, Duxton Plain, I think, could work, close to public transport, multi-generational living, because so many, for example, uh, Singaporeans actually uh, are two couple working families that actually drive to drop off the kids and then drive to pick them up, and then cook. So by actually going back to the older way of living, um, especially a very Asian way of living, where multi three generations live under one roof. I think it's a lot more economical. Now, you studied abroad. You studied at Yale. You've traveled a lot. You do work uh, in many different places. How has this shaped the work that you do? That, that question I was going to ask Kenny as well, but now you've asked it. But basically, <clears throat> I think about 10 years ago, uh, we had a journey with William Lim and the rest to India at the Yatra and people were maybe in the late 80s, early 90s, were trying to look for identity and regional references. <clears throat> and people were trying to say, are you an Indian architect or a Singaporean architect? And I think when you have the practice in so many places and you spend a fair bit of time working from other places like New York, etc., you really um, absorb and accept that architecture is actually universal. It's actually universal and that you have to then um, overlay it with your own design sensibility that allows you to absorb uh, references and cultural nuances without being too referential. 